name this our star. For there is many a small betrayal in the mind, a shrug that lets the fragile sequence break, sending with shouts the horrible errors of childhood, storming out to play through the broken dike. And as elephants parade, holding each elephant's tail, but if one wanders, the circus won't find the park. I call it cruel, and maybe the root of all cruelty, to know what occurs, but not recognise the fact. And so I appeal to a voice, to something shadowy, a remote, important meeting in all we talk. Though we could fool each other, we should consider lest the parade of our mutual life get lost in the dark. For it is important that wake, awake people be awake, or our breaking line may discourage them back to sleep. The signs we give, yes, or no, or maybe, should be clear. The darkness around us is deep. Thank you, Madam Mayor. In regards to my declaration of interest is in regards to 
agenda item 12, notice of motion number 8, by virtue of my employing to visit on board Thank you. Yeah, uh, agenda item 8, similar to uh, uh, the councillor from By virtue of being a board director, the gentleman living, it's a non beneficial interest, I believe. Uh, I'm aware that uh, in the emergency motion, uh, I am an ex employee of Fox and Waters and I've received pension. Thank you. Councillor Aitken. I think this is a I have a, an association of a similar kind of these sort of Thank you. Councillor Aitken. You're not going to send Councillor Thank you. Councillor Aitken. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, an ex employee of uh, Fox and Waters in relation to the
that, that counter-application being the worst nightmare for any Prime Minister and in fact she was Home Secretary in, at the time that uh, E.C. Phillips was, was killed. Um, but what I do want to say to colleagues, the permanent memorial is on display in Hamilton Square. It will be permanently floodlit. It will be looked after forevermore now by the Police Memorial Trust. They take that over and look after it. Um, it's made from a beautiful uh, red granite piece of stone that's brought from India. It's specially carved. It's sad to say that uh, there have to have been 42 of those memorials carved um, since uh, PC and Yvonne Fletcher was, uh, was killed in 1986, 85, um, But anyway, um, it, it is a beautiful stone, and if you haven't seen it, please do see it. But I, I was very kindly presented with a, a miniature, um, a miniature of the stone, which is on that table there. Um, and I hope that colleagues will take the opportunity to have a look at it this evening. And it is the intention that that stone will be placed in a, a glass case on a shelf near to the Freedom Room on the main corridor of the of the town hall for everybody from the public of Wirral to see as well. Um, so another, another very uh, moving, moving occasion. <coughs> Just starting to move on to business now, colleagues. I have received a request to requisition an extraordinary meeting of the council regarding the issue of scramble bikes, and I have agreed to hold this meeting on Monday, the 11th of December, 2017. Another announcement I'd like to make, and I'm going to ask the cabinet member just to say a few words on this, but I'm very pleased to announce that the council has won the National Transport Award for Road Safety. And I'd like Councillor Stuart Whittingham just to say a word about that. Thank you. Thank you,
solve a massive <coughs> opposing violence for an extra weedy bin for food waste. Um, my second petition, uh, Madam Mayor, is uh, tonight we've submitted a petition signed by 4,102 residents who, who all have concerns about antisocial behaviour caused by the members of Scrambler Lights. We and the petitioners believe that there is increasing public concern about antisocial behaviour related to motorbikes and scramble bikes. The petition calls on the council's Whittle Safer Hope to set up a dedicated task force using all agencies, elected members, on the voluntary sector to come up with a plan to tackle this menace, this menace once and for all. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a petition from uh, 92 residents requesting a pedestrian crossing on Shrewsbury Road in Oxford. Councillor David Elderson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a petition of 1,252 residents and users of the Jackson Park in West Kirby who are asking for the matter of urgency for the <coughs> to be dredged there because it's causing Fauna damage, flora damage to uh, um, all sorts of users of that lake, and it could be irretrievable damage unless action is taken to prevent it in the very near future. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a petition of 50 names, uh, residents petitioning the council to take action over the speed of cars on Mill Lane in Greasby, and I have a petition of 329 signatures asking the council for support for local businesses which believe they're being harmed by cars that are parked all day in spaces which should be used for the businesses' uh, customers. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a petition from 314 residents of the Policy Board. This is in addition to an online petition as well. Who, like my colleague, Councillor Ruth Berry's petition, are opposing plans for an extra reason to food waste. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a petition signed by 100 residents calling for traffic calming measures and improved pedestrian crossing facilities along Darby Road in Champagne. Thank you.
It's part of the systematic attack and erosion of the public sector and those that work in this area. Be that social workers, camps, support staff in our schools, social housing workers, our emergency services and our NHS. The government has got a clear austerity agenda to reduce public spending but at the same time to see national debt, national debt increased by over £800 billion. Pounds. This government is looking to find £100 billion pounds for the Royal Yacht, we have £13 trillion pounds in tax havens and yet we still neglect the most needy in our society and charge them 55 pence to the Universal Credit Helpline. Yeah, yeah. It is unbelievable. We cannot allow our members from the services they provide to bear the brunt of the Tory government's agenda <coughs> to dismantle the public sector. I will use a quote from the current Prime Minister to take from their party's conference in October 2016. Our economy should work for everybody. If your pay is stagnated for several years in a row and fixed items of spending keep going up, it doesn't feel like it's working for you. But mark my words, it's not working for our members. It's not working for anybody else in the public sector. As noted, NGC basic pay has fallen by 21% since 2010 in real terms. Local terms and conditions are further behind due to financial constraints. The 2013-14 payroll was not implemented and the staff still have to endure four days on pay leave, which equates to a further 1.6% pay cut. Local government pension recipients have seen their pension payments grow by an additional 12% in the same period. When we put that to some perspective, the disparity between pay and everyday expenditure. Since 2010, gas bills have gone up by 49%. Private rent has gone up by 25%. Crash fees by 34%. Water rates by 25%, rail fees by 27%, and food inflation by 21%. At the same time, homelessness has increased by 61%, and we have members from our own branch that actually use food banks and pay day loans. For a country with the fifth largest economy, that is shocking. I will be embarrassed to support these policies from a personal viewpoint and also ethically. I would also be embarrassed to actually implement them. Bear in mind, this is all ahead of predictions that inflation hit 3% this September this week, which is a general indicator of pay increases from April next year. The government has attempted to divide and rule on this issue by offering certain aids to the public sector various terms and pay rises, but we have just one on this and we need to use an additional funding for our staff. The majority of our staff live on the will by increasing pay, you increase the amount of expense to the local economy. It can help stimulate growth. But I'm not here to give you any economics that yet. I'm here with all our members. We have the recruitment and retention issue that the authority is facing. We have struggled to recruit in vital areas, but can benchmark the same posts in order to attract the right caliber of applicants. This leaves a sour taste in the mouth of those on the shop floor who have been hit the hardest, and are asked to do more for less. They feel left behind. With proper pay structures, and people pay sufficiently, we can help reduce the reliance on agency staff and increase morale. Consultants though, that's a different matter. Month on month, year on year, our members have taken more than their fair share of the burden. Enough is enough. Our members and all work for the most prized asset that the council has. This needs to be reflected in your support for this motion and also find a way to address the imbalance and disparity that we have. I ask you all to support the motion. Thank you.
the relocation of the core or of civic functions as a sequel to be carried out. A, counselor, a question to the Cabinet Member for the Environment, <coughs> Councillor Brightmore. Uh, Councillor Brightmore, this week I received this from a 6 year old from my ward who is fed up of walking a dog where she lives. Uh, we know dog fouling is a major problem. Can I ask what, uh, what uh, resources you are putting in to tackle the dog fouling? We want this to use it as a poster in the campaign. Feel free to do so. Uh, question Cabinet Member of Social Care and Health, Councillor Christine Jones. Can the Cabinet Member please update Council on the service provided to people for the access to care for course and tell us whether the numbers have increased or declined? And a question to the Cabinet Member of Transport and Infrastructure. Can the Cabinet Member please outline which elements of due diligence he believes are not carried out, which led to the task of a scrutiny review into Redmond Park and being called from Cabinet? And when will this matter be considered? Thank you, Councillor Stewart Kelly. Thank you, Madam uh, Mayor. Question to Benny Booney, uh, as he is uh, Children's Services. Uh, in our report, she says that we were, it's important that we provide uh, our schools with every possible support to maintain and improve performance. The Cabinet Member will be aware, however, of a letter of concern uh, received by a department from the National Deaf Children Society following the suggestion in a report to the Schools Forum on the 27th of September, which suggested that a training service model may be suitable provision for the provision of support to schools for the teaching of deaf and hard of hearing children. Will she take this opportunity to rule out this option? And if she can't at this moment rule it out, will she take time to look at the experience in other areas where this model has been tried and found to be inadequate, such as in Leicestershire County Council? <coughs> and secondly, concerns have also been raised about the succumbance of the teacher of the deaf into another service area. And it's suggested that this has left the service to deaf and hard of hearing students struggling. Will she undertake to look at this and ensure that the service is meeting the needs of students? Councillor Brian Kenny. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've got two questions, please. The first one is to the Leader of the Council. Uh, will the Leader of the Council please comment on a recent article in the Times which reported that the number of apprenticeships has fallen by almost two thirds since the government introduced a levy on companies that were supposed to increase opportunities for young people. The second question, Madam Mayor, is to Councillor Jeanette Williamson. There's been a lot of speculation recently concerning the Council apparently sitting on £94 million of reserves. Can the Cabinet Member please uh, clarify if that is the case and comment on the overall situation, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Burgess Jones. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor. Uh, just two quick questions, really. The first one is to the Cabinet Member for Housing and Community Safety, uh, Councillor Davis. Uh, the question is the Cabinet's Strategic Regeneration Framework uh, states that the crime rate in Willow has continually fallen in the past 11 years. Uh, can you outline what he plans in respect? to the growing problem of scramble bikes and a specific reason for that is that last Thursday I attended the early club where there were well over a hundred members of the community there who were looking to set up a home watch, which I think we all agree with, um, but one of the triggers was very much uh, George around scramble bikes and what they can do uh, to alleviate that problem. And the second question is to the cabinet member for localism and engagement, uh, Matthew Patrick. Um, can the cabinet member advise, and, and this is probably going to test your memory, um, can the cabinet member advise why the promised advertising content in what used to be called the Wiggle View, I don't know if you know it because no one's ever received it, um, <laughs> why it's available to materialize? <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Sorry, um, Councillor Burgess Jones. Uh, Councillor Patrick didn't get the last part of the question. Apologies, Madam Mayor, I'll repeat it very, very quickly. Um, 
it is, can the cabinet member advise why the promised advertising content in Whittle View has failed to materialise? Uh, I'm conscious that uh, the last time I saw one, which was in the members' tea room, uh, there was no advertising that I could see of any great report from, from third parties, I think, as well. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a question for the Cabinet Member for Social Care and Health. Um, at the presentation by Simon Banks to the Cabinet Care and Health Committee, it was reported that 8,000 more doctors and nurses have been recruited to the NHS in the last two years. In our borough, we're on University Teaching Hospital, was awarded almost a million pounds in June to help mitigate winter pressures on a &E. Is she aware of how that money is being spent? And my other question, Madam Mayor, is to the Cabinet Member for Finance and Income Generation. Welcome, Madam Mayor, that the Cabinet Member has quickly moved to introduce our call to exempt care leavers from council tax. She's also requested that all members help her to produce a legal budget. So can she confirm that this will be done under public scrutiny? using the open scrutiny committees rather than workshops. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Warren Ward. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My question is for the Cabinet Member for Environment, Councillor Brightball. As we see the, the World Urban Park European Congress comes to Wirral, I'd like to know what the significance is for this borough and the fact that we have this um, significant event here. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My only yeah, question is to the Cabinet Member for Transport and Infrastructure, with particular interest to the survey which is being undertaken at the moment um, into world's highways and transport. And I'd be very interested um, when we actually come to comparing our performance on the highways that are unlit from our streetlights. So, um, linking on to that paragraph, Madam Mayor. Um, can I, yeah, obviously I yield to thought that the Council of Richmond would have anticipated a question in this vein for myself, so I hope for an answer here tonight rather than a written one. But um, Council of Richmond, if you could possibly tell me that back in April 2016, you promised that all streetlights would be um, repaired by the end of that month. Unfortunately, they weren't, and made the same promise again that they will be repaired by the end of April 2017. So, will he be repeating that promise, Madam Mayor, at the end of 2018? And perhaps, Stuart, you would be able to advise me and the Council on the number of current streetlights that are out. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Paul Stewart. Tackled. 
In terms of quality of housing that the Cabinet Member refers to in his report, can I ask the Cabinet Member uh, that when he next meets with Content and Living, uh, he raises the issue of improvements to communal areas in low-rise uh, low flats, notably the flats in Wallace Village that have seen no improvement since the transfer of council housing stock uh, 15 years ago. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, could Councillor Spurt please update the briefing on the progress of the work she's doing as portfolio holder for Clinton? Councillor Adam Sykes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this question is to Stuart Whittingham, the uh, Cabinet Member for Transport and Infrastructure. The Cabinet Member has recently obtained one point two million from the authority's reserves for tree maintenance and the results of the tree survey have recently been obtained by a Freedom of Information request. Can he advise when he expects to work on the 353 trees, trees at this high risk to be completed? Councillor Jerry Ellis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Quickly, an exercise that was one. Thank you. 